Hey everyone, uh, today we got a, another uh, kind of gameplay trailer video uh, voiceover thingamajigger. Well, I actually have some stuff I got to show on screen for this, but uh, just not quite ready this morning uh, to, to to be on camera. You know what to say? You know you gotta you gotta be camera ready. Am I camera ready this morning? But we have a very interesting piece of news. This actually landed uh, yesterday, but I was a bit wrapped up in watching my Milwaukee Bucks take it in six games. Giannis with fifty points. Oh my god! Uh, but setting that aside, uh, we actually have a update on a massive leak at Nintendo. So what happened was a couple years ago uh, that, that this guy, um, I'm not going to give out his exact name. He's already been been sued to high heavens by Nintendo and um, is going to be in jail for some time. <laughs> um, basically hacked into Nintendo's servers, internal servers, got, got a hold on a bunch of internal game files, uh, emails and all that. And after um, the uh, Giga leak, as it's been called, uh, kind of seemed like it came to an end, right? We got all these files over a year ago. Uh, the guy's now, you know, done and in jail. Suddenly, we're getting more. We suddenly have more information from this Giga leak. I'm not even sure how this happened, um, but here we are, and that leak, that hack, is still giving us new information. So we're going to talk about. All uh, the information we got today. None of this, by the way, is anything that is pertinent to future games. But this is a good look at Nintendo's history, including some games on Switch. Uh, but before I get into that, I got to remind you, we are giving away a Switch OLED. Uh, so if you would like to win a Switch OLED, it's super simple. Just be subscribed to the channel. That's it. Winner will be announced live in early October. All right, so uh, the, I'm getting this all from Forest of Illusion or at Forest Illusion on Twitter. And uh, he put also a, a slew of tweets here. And we're just going to start at the beginning because, it, you know, we got to go through everything piece by piece. Uh, so, so there's been a new leak from the Gigalite lot of files from last year. The leak contains source code to a Wii service program, an upgraded version of the GameCube service disk, and some documentation for various systems, including the Nintendo Switch. Uh, a prototype for Pokemon Let's Go Eevee leaked. Uh, prototype 201802261916262. Uh, and so it looks like a bunch of stuff starting to slowly drip out now. A zip with some internal emails and a ROM of Pokemon Emerald just leaked. Uh, so that's what this is right here. Um, so there's that. Obviously, I don't like to go into any of the personal email stuff because uh, personal emails are just that. I don't believe just because this stuff is out there. People should be reading them. Um, and then it says, sorry for not providing screenshots of the Let's Go Eevee build. So here are some I just took now. Keep in mind, it's dev signed. So you won't be able to look at it if you don't have a dev switch to play it. Uh, so here you go. Here's the dev menu app application, Eevee publisher, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's that one. And then obviously uh, this, where it looks like this might be like a, 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 a you know menu screen uh, being able to play the game. So there you go for that. Uh, and it says uh, Hashin underscore two zero one three zero nine one two dot zip leaked, which contains some Pokemon XY stuff. A bunch of GameCube hardware documentation stuff leaked from IQ in the BB two dot seven Z. Interestingly, the GameCube was never released within China, but it does seem that it was ready for production. So this is suggesting that uh, for those who don't know, IQ is basically a rebranding of Nintendo systems in China back when. Uh, they were banning console sales. So Nintendo basically backdoored their way into China uh, with these IQ systems through another company um, and kind of distanced themselves from it in case they ever got in trouble, uh, which they never did. And there was a GameCube version of the IQ, uh, and it just never came out. Um, so that's very interesting. I'm sure people in China really wish that it did come out because until recently, they haven't been able to officially buy like the, the name-branded systems, you know? The Nintendo Switches, the PlayStation 5s, you they could buy those now, uh, but they couldn't buy those. It was it was, it was banned by the government uh, back in the day. But anyways, moving forward, Forest of Illusion then goes and says, some more info on the canceled IQ GameCube. They wanted the system to be capable of DVD slash CD playback, uh, as well as uh, not be able to play regular GameCube discs. So very, really interesting. So they were going to have their own sort of discs, and they weren't going to play the normal GameCube discs, uh, and be CD and DVD capable, which to me is a big deal because 
Um, yeah, like there was a, a DVD CD capable GameCube uh, that came on Japan only, but so few of them actually came out that it, it really didn't feel like much of a thing. Uh, but here's a, this is a working document is to define the next 3D interactive entertainment system for IQ to sell in China. The system, also known internally as BB2, is based on the Nintendo GameCube technology. The market requirements and high level pro product, product definitions of BB2 are discussed in the sections below. Assumptions cost is a major driving factor when new features are decided. The lifespan of a game console is on average to last at least four years. Since space is very limited in most households in China, system footprint should be as small as possible. Each household contains only one TV, and it is located in the main living room. Karaoke is still popular in China and Asia, and karaoke discs are readily available and affordable. Requirements. System cannot play existing Nintendo GameCube discs, so you can't like import you know, GameCube discs and play it. Uh, the DVD licensee fee must be charged against the customer based on user activation. It is not included as part of the system cost, so there would be like a user activation fee uh, for using the DVD. Uh, capabilities for compatibility some existing gamecube peripherals are required to be supported such as the gamecube wired and wireless game controllers and memory cards target market this device is positioned as an advanced 3d game system with dvd slash cd playback capabilities that is it is a game system first and a dvd player second that's always been nintendo's thing if you're going to have media functionality gaming's emphasized first obviously the idea is uh since it wouldn't support the normal mini discs that you would probably play gamecube games on traditional cds or dvds uh, which is something the rest of the industry was already doing so uh, kudos to the, this potentially being the only gamecube that would have been doing that um so here's a bunch of gen 4 uh protos just leaked and gen 4 underscore era underscore protos dot seven zip um and so here you go there there's your gen 7 prototypes um and all that jazz so that that's really cool um a bunch of more internal emails from nintendo leak this time in Teru Sama underscore mail underscore 2006.7z. It also contains a load of attachments. Um, and here's some, some interesting. So here's some early Wiimote designs. Uh, I find this really interesting. Obviously, uh, Nintendo went more with the one here. Um, the power button was obviously rounded in the end. It didn't leave this kind of square design. So this is more like what the final design was. Uh, but you'll see, you know, they had the L and R button here for some reason off to the side. Uh, interesting to note that this button's referring to the trigger button underneath, you know, A, 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 C, C. Uh, very interesting to see how they were doing that. Uh, then you go over here where they move the L and R buttons down here. Uh, but notice there was no D pads, um, you know, on the bottom. And then they put the D pad on the bottom here. And then this looks like a more like a TV remote, right? That's what this reminds me of, anyway. It's more like a TV remote style. Um, and this even even here is like a more simplified TV remote style. So uh, definitely Nintendo was experimenting and looking into various uh, different Wiimote designs. Uh, but obviously, you know, they settled basically with this design with a rounded power button. Um, and they didn't call this an A button underneath. I think mean, they called this the Z button, right? Or maybe it was called the A button. Z button? I don't know. I, I can't remember. I don't have a Wiimote in front of me right now. But I know that this was close to the final design. Uh, so that's really, really cool. And it said a prototype of the Wii Virtual Console from E3 2006. Pretty cool, huh? So this is what it was going to be like. It ended up not being this way. Obviously, we know how Virtual Console did work on Wii. Uh, but this is a preview of like what the what it was going to be when you got to like the selection, right? You see the NES, SNES, N64 at the top, and you would go by and select the system um, in this really cool graphical way. Uh, but that's obviously not how it ended up working. It was much more simplified than this when it finally came out. But still, really, really cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's the gist of this uh, Giga Leak. There's going to be more stuff probably coming out as people sift more through the files. I'm actually curious how. The files got out, um, you know, how we have more leaks coming when the guy who had all this information um, is basically in jail at the moment. I do think that uh, clearly he must have passed off all of the stuff that he was able to get off Nintendo servers to other people or stored it somewhere on the Internet. And, and, and people who have access to it are just slowly bringing it out. It'll be interesting to see if there's anything else left in this Giga leak uh, to come out that's going to uh, suggest anything. Obviously, um, you know, the, the guy did mention, hey, there's some stuff about you know, Nintendo Switch, but we didn't really see much of that in here except for the Let's Go Eevee stuff. So we'll have to see um, what, if anything else, comes out. Um, it, it's definitely an interesting leak. It's, it is fun to go behind the scenes at Nintendo and see how things are going. Um, it's not always uh, going to be exactly what we want it to be, but it's still pretty exciting to me anyways. Uh, so if you're interested in this, I will link to... Uh, his tweets, and you can um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll find a couple other sources as well, so you guys can dig further into the Giga Leaks. Because uh, to me, this is just really really interesting stuff. 
Um, I'm, I'm really, um, I, I just like getting behind the scenes at Nintendo, even though technically this came through an illegal means, but it's, you know, it's been a while now. This information's out there. What are you going to do? We're here to report what's out there. This is what's out there. So I uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I am with Andrew Robojets from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.